<laughs> hey, um, uh, good news. Finally got the, uh, the new, uh, phone, uh, tripod mount for my phone, so now I can get back to using, uh, the suction cup for the windshield. Um, now, uh, before I get into this, uh, I just want to tell a little funny story. Um, yesterday, uh, I said that I was going to be going to the advanced screening of Baywatch, and, uh, <clears throat> I didn't realize that the, the, the ticket actually said it was for Tuesday, so I'm an idiot. Um, but I finally got around to it. I'll, I'll go into more on that uh, a little bit later, but, uh, right now I just want to talk about, uh, few other films I saw beforehand, um, two of which were really good, uh, another one, another one was just not, not at all, and, but let's get into some of the good stuff, um, first film I want to talk about was one that I was gonna surprise you guys, uh, it was Life, um, and some of you have some of you have probably heard of the film, uh, it's the, uh, alien, uh, parasite film, uh, with, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds, um, I saw that, like, after I got into that mix-up of, uh, <laughs> of, um, mix-up of Baywatch, uh, I immediately bolted over to the discount theater to go see Life, which is where it's currently playing still. Um, but I wanted to go see that film because, uh, I was listening to Double Toasted when, after I saw Alien Covenant, and they were talking about how, like, the better Alien film that's come out this year was, uh, Life. So I, and I didn't get around to seeing Life yet, um, mostly because of classes, but I finally got around to it, and it was actually a lot, um, uh, let me just... Okay, that's better. And it was actually... They were right. It was actually a really, really interesting film. Like, is it an alien knockoff? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's expected. But it's... It's the kind of... It's the kind of alien knockoff where it... It does it right. Like, it focuses... It, it only has, like, a six, uh, main cast members in the film, but I, I think that works it to its advantage because, you know, there's le a smaller body count means, like, a better character development, which is something that Alien Covenant really lacked in, as I was talking about, like, there were only, like, three or four, maybe five characters that I actually cared about, and the others were just, like, expendable, like, some of them were even killed off, like, right off the bat. Um, but not with life. Life takes a bit more time with... It, it takes more time to get to know these characters, and, uh, you really do care for them when all, uh, some of them do get, uh, axed off, and... And that was really some... And that was something I really got into, and also the the uh, the suspense and direction in that film is it it it, it worked. Sorry if I'm rambling. It's just I haven't seen the film since last night, and I'm a little bit focused on other things like the other films I saw. But uh, anyway, anyway, um, I really dug the the suspense that the film built up, like. It really had more of a feel for the original Alien than Alien Covenant or even Prometheus did. You you actually do feel the the claustroph you actually do feel for these characters as they're in their in this uh, claustrophobic area, and the way they have this alien developed is, like, really interesting. Like, it starts off as, like, a sort of amoeba of sorts, but it slowly starts to get bigger. Like, it's kind of like a mix between, um, uh, what, what, what's, 
what's a good way to put it? Uh, it's kind of like a mix between the blob and uh, the the Muto from the 2014 Godzilla, or I guess in this case the Cloverfield monster in a way, but uh, to me it looked a little bit more like the Muto. Um, but it, it did have a lot of really it, obvious... It, it does have some obvious points made about it, um, but but it but it doesn't it doesn't degrade the film to a point where it becomes unwatchable. Like you still you still got these characters you care about. You still uh, got a sense for <clears throat> you still got a sense of uh, thrill to. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you still, like, you still got the characters to get invested in. You still have the suspenseful feeling that just keeps pouring down your neck as you're watching them. And uh, a lot of the, there are a lot of creative uh, kills in the movie as well, and a lot of them actually did get me a lot. Uh... Um, but yeah, it's like, it, it's definitely one of the better alien knockoff films I've seen, and in all honesty, it's probably one of the better alien films in general. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I actually found myself enjoying that movie. Um, even though I might have missed like the first five minutes because I was rushing or, or because of I don't know, like uh, stoplights or something. I, I still thought that the rest of the film really did a damn good job. And if you can find a theater that's playing it still, uh, I recommend it. Or it'll be out on Blu-ray in like a month or two. So there's that to look forward to. All right. Um. Ah, uh, what uh, what else was there? Um. Uh, the other good film that I liked was The Wall. Which, if you don't know, it's that, uh, it's the, uh, Iraqi, uh, Iraq, it's the, uh, it's the war film starring, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson and John Cena. God, that is hot. Um, but yeah, it's the, uh, Iraq war film starring Aaron Taylor Johnson and John Cena. Um, it's mostly focusing on, it's mostly Aaron Taylor Johnson's film. Um, probably, I'm going to say this right now. I think this is Aaron Taylor Johnson's attempt, uh, attempt at trying to get an Oscar nod because he is the main focus of the entire film, like all the way through, like, like John Cena is in the film for like a supporting film, but <clears throat> It's just mostly focusing about this one soldier. He's all alone. He's injured. He's up. He's literally against a wall in the middle of the Iraqi desert, and he's got a sniper on on his tail. Uh, and most of most of the film is just the conversation pieces between Aaron Taylor Johnson and the sniper who, uh is able to communicate him through radio. Um, I don't know if it was based on a true story. I, uh, it could be, and I, it, I probably just didn't see that part in the credits. Um, uh, but yeah, it's like, it, it definitely is a, f depending on your opinion of Aaron Taylor Johnson, will probably depend, will probably, uh, give you a feel of if you're gonna like this movie or not, because it is, it is his, it is his film, like, literally the other, the sniper that's on him, he, you, like, don't see the guy, it's just Johnson up against this wall listening to an earpiece, so, <clears throat> yeah, 
Um, though I also gotta give credit to John Cena, who actually does a really damn good job in the film. Uh, like, e even if he's not there that much, he still, he still does, you still care for the guy, like, y you do buy that, you do get into the friendship that these two share, and, yeah, I was actually kind of impressed with that, like, what is that guy doing? Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, the the wall. Uh, depending on if you're interested, uh, I'd say it's worth a watch. Uh, I mean, it's it's definitely a short set. Like I think it was only like ninety minutes long. So there's that. <clears throat> <sighs> um. Now to get into some of the bad. Uh, so, to kill time before my screening for Baywatch, the I saw the wall and the. Uh, but before I saw the wall, I saw Snatched, which with uh, with uh, Amy Schumer and Goldie Hawn. Um. Uh, I, I will say this, I I like Amy Schumer, I, I think she's a good comedian, and, you know, for me, most, most, one of the main reasons I wanted to see this film was because it's been a while since we've seen Goldie Hawn in, like, in, like, a big mainstream lead role, like, I don't even remember what the last role she had was, um, <clears throat> but, yeah, so I wanted to give this a shot, thinking, okay, Amy Schumer, like her, she's pretty funny. I thought Trainwreck, I thought Trainwreck was great. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to see what she could do with uh, this film. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't like this. I, I didn't like Snatched. Um. For starters, uh, I think one of the, it, it's, it's not the same, it's not the same kind of feel that, tra uh, uh, the f same kind of feel of comedy that Trainwreck had, uh, well, I mean, for one, it's a different scenario, whereas, because Trainwreck was a romantic comedy, and Snatched is a kidnapping, uh, shenanigans film, I should, I suppose, uh, shenanigans vacation film. I think that's what I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, uh, it's definitely a different feel. Plus Schumer didn't write the script. So, uh, and it was instead written by, uh, Katie Dippold who wrote, who, if you don't know, she co-wrote the script to ghost to Ghostbusters 2016. Um, so that should give you a feel of what it's gonna be like, and all I gotta say is, I I laughed like a couple times here and there, but for the most part, I just felt freaking miserable in that film. Like, oh my god, I like Schumer and Han, bless their hearts, they're trying their best with this, but my god, do they have such shit to work with? Like, a lot of the time, it's either because Han is an overprotective, like, just so overprotective and motherly that it just gets annoying, or there, it's gonna be a situation where Schumer is just a drunk bitch. Like, I mean, I know a lot of people say that's pretty much her archetype with, uh, train wreck and so forth, but at the very, yeah, it is that way, but at least, sh at least the kind of stuff that her persona in that film had was at least some good material. With, with this film, it's not the same case, because it's pretty much that archetype that Schumer played in train wreck, only much more unlikable. Like, oh my god, this... 
this is just a like almost all the characters in this film I ended up just really not liking at all the worst of them being uh oh, I forget the guy's name but uh Ike something uh uh, if you, you'll know who I'm talking about, it's the guy who played uh, Melissa McCarthy's love interest in Tammy and uh, Amy Poehler's love interest in Sisters, I believe. Yeah, Sisters. Um, he plays uh, he plays uh, Schumer's brother, and I'll give him credit. He he got at least one laugh out of me, but. A lot of the time, I just, every time I cut back to him, I'm like, why, why is this guy here? He, he is the kind of person that just makes you wish you could, he's, he's pretty much the archetype of like a man child, uh, or a man child mama's boy who you just look at and you hear, you listen to him for a few seconds and you just think like, wow, please, somebody punch this guy in the face and knock him out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like, oh my god. Ugh. Um, and, and, there, and there are a lot of, like, and it isn't just with him, a lot of the men... Like a lot of people, one of the thing, one of the main complaints that people had with the uh, 2016 Ghostbusters was how uh, Dippold made all of the male characters seem like either three things: idiots, douchebags, or creeps. It's done worse in Snatched. Like, no, it, it pr it's pretty much all of the characters in this film are just made to offend just about everybody. Like, <sighs> like, I don't even know where to, I don't even know where to continue with this one. Like, <sighs> oh, fuck. <sighs> yeah, like, I've got nothing. It's like, they all just, they all just don't work, and pretty much like the wall. It's only ninety uh, an hour and night an hour and a half, but my god, did it feel like two hours? And that, that's that's a really bad sign when it just feels like forever. Um, and and Wanda Sykes and uh. I believe it was Joan Cusack. Like they, they, they appear in the film in supporting roles. They're just as bad as. They're they're just annoying. Like there's like a running gag where it's like uh, Joan Cusack is like this uh, torture expert who cut out her tongue so she's mute throughout the entire film. Uh, but there are other points where she's like gonna. Like, the one thing that they were going to get to in a scene was where she's going to improvise with, like, torturing this one guy that... The the guy responsible for uh, getting uh, Schumer and Han into this situation, but... Um, he ends up confessing before she... Uh, before Cusack even starts to begin the torture session, and it just kills the mood. Like, okay, if you're not... If you're gonna have all this build up, have a good payoff. But if you're just gonna, if you're just if you're just gonna cut away from it like that, just so like there's like not as much violence, it's like, dude, screw you. It's like if you're gonna have this build up, go all out with it. Don't don't pussy out at the last minute. Yeah, like for. For a big return, for a big mainstream film like this, uh, Goldie Hawn deserved better. Like everybody in this film deserved better. Like yeah, I I don't fucking recommend that one. Although to be fair, it's not as bad as Baywatch. 
Yeah, um, Baywatch sucked. Sucked really bad. Um, yeah, where, where to begin? Um, none of the jokes are funny. For starters, like, or, no, wait, hold on, let me just backtrack a bit. Um, I... I've never seen an episode of the show Baywatch. Um, the only thing I know about it is that it's known for having lifeguard uh, uh, lifeguards played by David Hasselhoff and Pam Anderson running in slow mo and saving every pe uh, people, uh, being like a soap opera, I guess. Like, I don't know. I never really cared. I was more busy with uh, other show uh, with cartoons at that time, um, yeah, um, and, and for the record, uh, Hasselhoff and Anderson do cameo in this film, but it's done to a point where I just don't give a shit. Like, it, it's pretty much the same situation with Chips, although to be fair, Chips at least got a few laughs out of me. Baywatch... It had nothing, and that's kind of sad, because Sean Anders, uh, was it Sean Anders? Uh, the, the guy who directed Horrible Bosses, um, the first one. Uh, I, th I know he can be, a, he, he knows how to direct comedy well. I've seen it done before. Um, with, with this film, however, it does, a lot of, all of the jokes pretty much just fall flat. It's just... Again, it's just trying to appeal to those... It's trying to capture the market that really fell in love with 21 Jump Street. Uh, the, 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 the films. But the problem is, again, 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street had Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Two really funny comedic directors who know their stuff. Like, and if you want, if you don't believe me, go watch Claudia with a Chance of Meatballs, the Lego movie, uh, anything they've ever done, like, or this, the show, Clone High, it's really, really fun, their work is really funny, and they know how to make even the dumbest of jokes, uh, work, but with Baywatch, it doesn't, it doesn't have that same effect, uh, I didn't really care for what was going on. And and that's kind of sad, because it's got a great cast attached to it. Like, although, well, I say great cast, but I mean, like, only, like, three or four people I actually recognize. Like, uh, Alexander Dragerio? The chick from the Percy Jackson films. I want her to... I, I want her to succeed, because she does seem like she's a capable actress. But my god, does she really pick such horrible films. Like, the last film I remember seeing her in was probably Texas Chainsaw 3D, and that film was... G no, no, wait, no, wait. Uh, she was in San Andreas. That was it. Um, and, and to be fair, I thought she did fine with San Andreas. Um, but... Other than that, she's she's just kind of a blank slate actress. That's that, that's pretty much all I know her for. Um, and uh, that Hannibal Burgess has a as a an appearance in the film playing a, a sort of the black friend to the uh, dopey fat character in the film who just that that character just. That character was irritating because, like, we know it's the trope of the fat kid going to get the hero or going to get 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 one of the main, going to get the hot girl. But my God, dude, the, the jokes they do with this guy are fucking insufferable. Uh, but then again, everybody else in this film is insufferable, like a. Uh, the love interest for the fat kid is just, it's just there. It's, I guess she's supposed to be playing Pam Anderson's character from the show, although I wouldn't fucking know. 
Um, Dwayne Johnson is obviously David Hasselhoff's character, and Dwayne Johnson can be a really charming guy, and he has shown that both in his film, a lot of other films, and especially in real life, but my... Here, it's, it looks like he's trying to find a balance between the charming dude, uh, the charming guy, and the... Yeah. Sorry. Uh, between the charming guy and douchebag. Or charming leader, I should say. I don't, I don't know. But... I don't know. I just didn't really like his character. Although it's nothing compared to Zac Efron in this film. Who... Okay, look, Zac Efron can Zac Efron can be a great comedic actor. Like I've seen it before in, like last year. It's like Mike and Dave need wedding dates, the Neighbors movies. Uh, what else was there? Uh, freaking even Dirty Grandpa. I'll admit I liked. Yeah, it's it's raunchy and stupid, but at least Dirty Grandpa made me laugh. Like, uh, and, and and at least Zac Efron was was at least, was at least a good, he was, he was doing a good job, and wasn't playing an annoying schmuck bag like he was in this, like, he was, he was just insufferable to sit through, like, for the first hour, he's this cocky, you know, professional guy trying to bring himself back up, but he, but he's not likable at all, and, oh my god, like, even, even when he tries to have a moment of realization of, I fucked up, I want to actually be a part of this team, it's like, I didn't buy it, because, <sighs> oh my god, and the villains, they don't really fucking care, they're just drug dealers trying to make the, make the beach private, it's like, I don't, I don't fucking care. Yeah, it's basically a film that doesn't really care about its audience. I don't e I, I don't even know what to say anymore. I recommend life, recommend the wall. Um the movie uh, the wall. Um but I don't recommend Snatch and I especially do not recommend Baywatch. This film was insufferable. Oh my god. Like you, you know what I'm going to say it th this was worse than Chips. By far, oh my god. <sighs> I went to an advanced screening of this. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's not worth it. Don't go see, don't go see Baywatch. Go, go. Go see something else. Like, I think Pirates is coming out this week, so, uh... Yeah, go go see Pirates. It's gonna do better than Baywatch by far, but... <sighs> or, or, or if you do want to see a film with The Rock again, and Fate of the Furious is still out. Um... Or, if anything, if you want to rent a Zac Efron comedy that's actually good, go go see some of the other films I recommended, like, uh, Dirty Grandpa, or Mike and Dave, or, Na or any of the Neighbors movies. They're much better than what I saw. <sighs> yeah, so, um, hope you enjoyed this, uh, longer vlog, even though it might have been just me rambling, uh, but, whatever. At least I got my new tripod mount, so... Peace.